Hello scrappers and planet lovers, Tin Man here with another video. So I had a viewer ask me if I could do a video showing and explaining how to identify tin, aluminum, stainless steel, zinc, and chrome. So I'm very happy to do so. As you can see behind me, there are a number of items here and they are all metallic in color. So it can be very confusing for a scrapper. And it is definitely important to know your item because they are all worth different prices at a scrapyard. And if you have them all together, unfortunately, you're going to get the lowest price for it. So very happy to do so. I'm um, going to start actually with tin and shred. The first rule, definitely make sure you have a magnet. Def I have a magnet just from actually a microwave, a uh, magnetron, very powerful. And the best thing, the easiest thing to start with is to take this magnet, anything that is magnetic is automatically going to go into tin or shred. And for this video, there are different categories, especially when it comes to aluminum. You have cast aluminum, extrusion, clean aluminum, uh, painted. I'm just actually, for this video, just going to talk about how to separate the different types of metal not the different categories of the same metal. So I do have videos on those. If you're interested, go check those out. But very simple. As you can see, I have actually two hard drive uh, or tower boxes here from computers. And very simple, the first thing, if I run a magnet to this one, it does not stick, as you can see. This one, however, it sticks. So automatically, this is actually going to go into my tin or shred pile. Currently, tin and shred right now is going from 10 to 13 cents a pound, which is great. Um, I have, as I said, this is a different metal, so I'm not going to tell you what it is yet, but I am just going to put it over here. Here I have a couple more items. Run a magnet to it. The magnet sticks, so this is going to be tin. Here are a couple other pieces, tin, tin. That's going to be me metallic. Now, this is actually going to go into steel. I will very quickly say tin, the difference between tin and steel. Steel is worth a little bit more a pound right now, and it depends on the thickness of the metal. These are more of your structural beams. Uh, so steel is anything larger or thicker than a quarter inch. This, this pipe actually came out of a barbecue, um, so very heavy. And because it is thicker than a quarter inch, this is going to be steel. But... The rest of these items, you can see, oh, this is also going to go into my tin. The rest of these items, except this little box, is going to go into my tin. However, the rest of this, if I put a magnet to it, it is non-magnetic. So I am going to hold on to this one. So first rule, separating tin and your steel, anything that is magnetic is going to go into that pipe. Moving on, I want to look at stainless steel and aluminum. So the first test, magnet test, easy to tell your steel. The second test, unfortunately, stainless steel or good stainless steel and aluminum are not magnetic. So this pot, for example, it does have a little bit of copper on the bottom, but I want to use this for the video. This, if I put a magnet to it, you can see it does not stick. It has a really nice shiny coat to it. I have a piece of a barbecue hose. I have a couple pieces of track here. You can see non-magnetic. I have a couple different hoses that come out of your house. Um, that comes out of your uh, wall. Actually, there was actually some copper wires in there. It's got a nice plastic case on it. I've got a hose here for the propane line um, and other items here. So the next thing to be able to look at these, sometimes you can get away with actually reading the item. I have a piece of track here. This actually, if I look at it, this is a beautiful piece I got out of a garbage sack. But if I bring up the camera, you can see it actually says right on it, aluminum. So that was nice. Sometimes it will say it on there. However, pots, for example, can be deceiving. Some pots will say stainless steel on them. Unfortunately, if I put a magnet to it and the magnet sticks, it is not worth um, stainless steel price because it is um, made of other items that make it magnetic. In order to classify as stainless steel price, which is definitely about uh, 
five times higher than your tin, it has to be non-magnetic. So this one, as you see, is non-magnetic. And the next test to make sure that that is not stainless steel or aluminum is the spark test. So the nice thing is using a grinder, if I touch these items with a grinder, aluminum does not spark. Stainless steel, however, will spark. So that is rule number two. If non-magnetic, use the spark test. So I am just gonna hit a couple of these items. Uh, as you can see, this pipe here does have a little bit of brass on it. So I'm obviously gonna put this into a different category, but I am gonna use this for the experiment as well as I will use my gas line because both of these are actually used for um, propane or gas. So here we go, just gonna put some safety glasses on. I have right here my grinder. So I'm gonna start with this one. casing. I have seen some coatings like this, actually stainless steel. This one didn't spark, so this is aluminum. This gas line didn't spark. Aluminum. Aluminum. This gas line with the brass is aluminum. This is also aluminum. This is actually a, a category of its own called extrusion, which is a form of aluminum, and I just actually did a video on extrusion, so if you're interested, go check that out. But aluminum as well. The pot did spark. Um, want to make sure also, by the way, when I'm looking at that, that the different bolts, these are non-magnetic. So if these were magnetic and I threw this into my stainless steel, because there's even a teeny bit of bolts on here that are magnetic, I'm going to get lower price. So in order to get the stainless steel value, you do want to remove those uh, bolts or rivets, if you will. And I just easily cut them off with the grinder. But it did spark stainless steel. And this hose also sparked. So stainless steel. And stainless steel right now, good stainless steel like that, is actually probably going for about 77 cents a pound compared to clean aluminum, which is about 50 cents a pound. So you definitely want to separate it. Um, I also wanted to, while I'm at the topic here, these actually come out of vacuum cleaners, um, all those power head cords. Uh, I see a lot of people, unfortunately, pass these up, and I don't know why. But here again are two examples, look very similar. Um, this one does look a little bit more dull, and sometimes that is a good indication of the difference between aluminum and stainless steel. Stainless steel usually being more shiny, but that is not a conclusive test. Again, if I hit this with a grinder, they are both non-magnetic, but easy identifiers. Really nice aluminum, or sorry, stainless steel because it sparked, and aluminum. Now, next item I do want to get to, oh, I should have also showed this. So there, this is also from a barbecue. I'm going to hit that hose, make sure if it's aluminum or stainless steel. So definitely stainless steel. I definitely want to make sure I get that brass off on both ends. Put this into my tin because this was magnetic but some great brass ends here as well as stainless. So I'm gonna put that off the side. The next item I wanna look at is uh, chrome and zinc. Um, and I should also say this was actually aluminum. Um, I just put a magnet to that. I am gonna, just for the test again, I'll use the spark test. But again, very easy to do. You want to make sure that all the rivets are non-magnetic as well, and I've already done this. So some of your tower, computer towers, the inside of it too, can be aluminum. And this actually weighs about four and a half pounds, which is great. So I throw this into with my uh, sheet aluminum. There are a couple of pieces on here that I could throw an extrusion, but in my opinion, not worth taking it apart, getting those uh, little pieces. I'll just throw it all in a sheet and get the poundage for it, the weight for it. Moving on, like I said, to my chrome. Chrome 
can be very deceiving. Um, these are actually from shower tracks, as you can see here. Some of these, the, in order to get chrome, you do want to make sure you scratch it. Uh, chrome is just a small covering on it. It can be deceiving like this. This actually was the case for this that comes after my power. And it looks very shiny. Sometimes you will see chrome, for example, on your grills of vehicles. Sometimes it's actually just like a plastic with a nice shiny coating on it. And that's exactly what this is. This is actually plastic made to look like chrome. So you definitely want to um, use a file, in this case, a scratch test. If I put a file to this, underneath of that, you can see it tears up quickly, and that's because that's plastic. So unfortunately, this is worth nothing. A lot of faucets and taps, for example, you will see that are chrome plated. So what I have for this experiment here is a knob from um, a tap. And I'm actually just going to scratch this with a, by file. And as you can see underneath, I'm hoping you can see there is that gold tinge there. And that's because this is actually brass. So I've actually contacted a scrapyard to ask them how to um, grade and separate chrome. And the gentleman at the scrapyard said, you do want to scratch it. Whatever metal is underneath of it, it that's the pile that's going to go into. So once I remove this knob here, this is going to go into my brass, which is going for right now about 350 a pound, which is awesome. This track, um, it is non-magnetic. It is non-spark. So this is actually aluminum. Um, uh, and again, sometimes you will find them on showers, like I said, very nicely shiny. And again, you do want to make sure it's not plastic, but this is actually aluminum. So this is actually going to go into my aluminum pile as extrusion, uh, because uh, its rule is with extrusion, anything that looks like it's been put through a, a press or a mold is extrusion. But again, it is chrome topped, but whatever is underneath is what the metal is going to be made of. So chrome. Um, couple things, items like this, you will find different faucets. Sometimes, especially if you have the box for them, they will tell you what it is. But a lot of your taps, if you scratch it like this one, uh, some of them will reveal brass underneath. Some of them will obviously be stainless steel. This one is actually going to go into, I'm scratching it, going to go into zinc. And the reason this is zinc, because I scratch it, uh, there is no gold underneath, so it's not brass. But these are easy to tell what they are. Um, they're not aluminum, because if this was aluminum, aluminum is very soft, I could bend it. Um, this is non-magnetic, as you can see. But it's also not stainless steel, because if I take this up to the camera, the interesting thing about these are, it's almost like it's a different color underneath. Um, to put it in perspective, it's almost like, I guess, when you take a puddle of water and you put a little drop of gasoline in, it gives you different colors. That's kind of what this is. It's different colored, um, pitted metal underneath. Um, I do have to remove these, uh, brass right here, the brass nuts, as well as the screws. But things like this, that, again, if I hear it, it is metal. Um, it is not stainless steel. Um, these, as I said, would classify as zinc. So you usually will find the zinc on different barbecue parts, if you will. Definitely sh um, faucets and taps for sure. Um, unfortunately, there's no other way that I could really explain that. Um, usually with these, if you scratch it, it doesn't reveal brass or anything like that. If I spark it, I could try that. We'll see if it sparks. It does have a small spark, but again, um, these, because I only have a few of these, you could just put them off to the side, put them in a little box, and the scrap yards may give you stainless steel if you don't have a much, uh, much, or if you have a lot of stainless steel, but these are going to be zinc. Uh, and again, it's usually when you turn it over, you can see the different colors here uh, on this. Um, it just, as I said, 
has a different look to it. So unfortunately, that's a hard one to explain, but as I said, that's the best I can do. And I do have a couple of these. Um, zinc, I don't actually even know the price on zinc coated, but um, I know that it's uh, usually about 30 and higher, 30, 30 cents a pound and higher. So it will definitely be worth more than your tin shred. So you definitely don't want to put it in that. But if in doubt, if you have some, easier to pour it off to the side and let the scrapyard uh, put it in the correct pile. You know, if it was all mixed together, they don't have the time to separate it that way. But if it's separated into different piles, it's easier for them to do. So zinc, again, chrome plated. You want to do the scratch test, look what's underneath it. Um, but again, if it is magnetic already, then you throw it right into your tin or steel. Again, high grade stainless steel is non-magnetic, or sorry, is non-magnetic, yes, and does spark. Aluminum is non-magnetic and does not spark. So spark test is definitely the best way to tell the difference between high quality stainless steel and aluminum. The magnet is the best way to identify if it is going to be stainless steel or any of those other great items opposed to tin and shred. So hopefully that answered that question for you. Please keep them coming. Some great questions that I've had. Again, for all those new beginners that are getting out there, welcome to this. It's a, it's a great way to not only make some money, but to help clean up the environment. And uh, again, thank you for watching this channel. So please comment down below, like, share, subscribe. And I'll catch you on the next one. Tin Man out.